Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Sunday, and welcome back to the farm. I'll warn you in advance that it's a little bit on the windy side. Gusts up to 40 miles an hour today, so if there's any audio issues, I apologize. Unless we're in one of our busy seasons, we don't typically work on Saturdays and Sundays. We reserve that for family time, relaxing. We're kind of using that luxury of not being there seven days a week, so we can bank that against a time here in another couple weeks in the spring, summer, and fall, where we do have to be here seven days a week. That is if it's required to get the job done in a timely manner and effectively. Between the abnormally dry ground conditions as well as some unique situations on a handful of farms, we're going to do something that I'll explain a little bit more later in the video that we probably wouldn't normally do this early. I'm opening this shed up specifically because our diesel exhaust fluid is in that tank right there. We've not moved it outside for this growing season. Obviously our bigger tractors use a lot of depth nowadays and I need some for the tractor I'm going to get out. In the violet wind and some of the winter annuals that are growing out on our soybean stubble, I'm going to show you guys how dry it is. Obviously, it's not a dust bowl by any means. It is relatively unusual, although not impossible, that you've got dryness an inch down. And I mean, it's going to be a little tacky there. It's just not gotten warm enough yet to really break some of this stuff apart. I also went right in the anhydrous berm, so it does kind of affect the moisture pattern. That's the thing about these winds. It's like, where did this stuff even come from? I mean, that's 100% ours. I just don't know where we had this because it was not here. So it's found a very creative path from A to B and who knows. The DB60 is not home yet. I've been gone for like four or five days. I went to Commodity Classic, great show in Houston. Never been before. If you guys get an opportunity to go to Commodity Classic next year, Definitely take it. Thanks for everyone who said hi. Dad said that they're still putting it back together. I think the guy that's working on it was working on another project. And that really has nothing to do with anything other than updating you on the DV60. We're after tillage today. Even if we did want to do an early soybean planting plot or trial, we couldn't because we don't have our bean planter. Today's mission is, no, not that one. Oh, the 9620R right there and we are going to be shuffling this around so we can pair that with whoever's field cultivators in front. Interesting observation, I saw a chunk of rotten wood here on the floor. I thought, there's no way this tractor brought that in. And I looked way up there, right in that area, and see that we have a board rotting in there. The only way that could be happening is if moisture was getting in somewhere. I'm not entirely sure. Might be something we need to look at because each board is fairly important. It's only the new 8Rs that do that. Probably good on fuel. It's almost to the top. Depth though, that could become an issue very quickly depending on how long we run for. I like to go ahead and start that one before I move anything else. It performs the worst, the cooler the system is. It doesn't like to release the hydraulic parking brake or something. It's an error code we get a lot if we don't let it warm up. So I'm gonna go ahead and back these other two machines out and we'll get that to the depth tank. Of course, I somehow managed to find the only place with mud on the farm right by the shed. We've upgraded to a mini bulk last season. We just haven't moved it back over. You want to put death inside for the winter. Beautiful early March day, if you forget about the violent wind outside. Probably after I finish this, I'll go ahead and try to grease everything, except for maybe the drive shafts. It's not full, but I'm running out of patience. My dad showed up and we were able to grease the drive shafts and the suspension on it. So we're actually pretty much field ready, other than having it waxed. Be 
a little challenging because you can't see the hitch on these tractors, poor design, and it's a little bit wide. quickly determine that this is not the tractor this is normally hooked up to. So the hoses may not be adjusted for the right way. planter back in the shed he doesn't want us to get in any ideas while we got the field cultivator out we're pretty big believers in putting everything away as ready to go as possible just a lot nicer to work on things in july to have them ready for next spring as opposed to february and march when it could be 20 degrees this year it's not it's 70 right now but you get the point mainly we're just inspecting tires here making sure that they're all aired up we changed every sweep that we thought needed replaced last summer, greased everything. And about the greasing, a lot of these newer fuel cultivators and newer tillage implements in general have sealed bearings, no grease requirements. I don't know if that's good or bad. It does reduce the amount of maintenance required to keep them going. I am going to go ahead and pull the Hagee back in so we can shut the barn up. No reason to leave everything open when it's this windy. A little easier if we can pull this in first. Hardly even got pulled in here before the doors are closing on me. Import our new setup files. Just did that from the operations center while I was servicing or greasing the other tractor. That way we got new setup data, new field files, everything should be nice and cleaned up again. Not that it was ever messy. Once I got involved with our field names, operation center data, things were streamlined and clerically improved pretty rapidly. Not because I'm an expert, just because I'm very particular about that stuff. I'm gonna run down the road to one of our dryer fields and just do a little test run to see how this thing's working and set and what ground conditions are looking like. Dad and I have an idea that they're fairly close. We've done some visual inspections of some certain target fields and we're going to check around home before tomorrow we go out and try and work some of these areas we've got some concerns about. My Uncle Jeff's on vacation. He lives there at the main farmhouse. He's got some of those wireless security cameras and I'm sure he'll get a notification that the tractor and field cultivator just pulled out the drive. Possibly get a text message or a call here very shortly. Vacation's over, Jeffrey. It's farming season. The head honcho essentially told me to tickle myself to death with tillage as long as it's not making a mess and the tractor is not tracking where I go. I'm just wanting to see how the ground looks and that this field cultivator doing a decent job. This is the same farm where we set the implement guidance on the planter. You can see the planter tracks right there. Just scratching a little itch farmers know how it goes we're still four weeks out from considering planning maybe three depending on how the weather develops over the next couple weeks and he 
right there I did that next line and you can see until it kind of caught the line here I was turning it was doing a pretty good job based on where I steered it I'm really excited about this boundary track I hope it works as good as it did on that first pass Could just be from uh, water. I don't know. Not really the smoothest finish. That's a powder. You could plant this today, but it's only the first week of March. That's not good. The reason I came to this field just to test things out is because there's some grass and winter annuals that have been encroaching in since last growing season. We don't spray any kind of fall residuals. We don't run a 2,4-D dicamba. I don't know if people run dual, atrazine, simazine, none of that kind of stuff, metribuzin, I've heard people like that. And I thought, you know, this is a great opportunity to come kill this darn grass that's really been bugging me for the last three months. These seagulls, if that's what these even are, I don't know that they were expecting this, but they are very excited that I just did that. Hopefully they get a worm or two. Whatever you do, Andy, don't stop in another field conveniently located between here and home. Uh, the devil on my shoulder is saying, one field more even going to be an issue. Uh, there's a lot of grass creeping in on that field too. Just don't alert the boss and we'll all be okay. So this one might be tracking a little bit more which is kind of to be expected. I figured that this wetter field than the other one would probably not work as well. Not bad though, really. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boundary track with an accurate field edge boundary, RTK based, is the real deal. And I only have SF1 on this tractor. This is really impressive. I've only grabbed the steering wheel to turn on like 90 degree type corners. I'll say that and then I'll smoke something in there like one of these bins. Look at these guys just following me around looking for a handout. Crazy. I'm just playing around here at this point. I'm cutting myself off. Although it is nice to see some of these winter annuals get ripped out of the ground. Some of these fields get pretty hairy. We might need to consider start putting some down in the fall to kill these off. The hard part about running a fall herbicide program too is that you're adding more cost to the equation. Fall programs other than with mare's tail or some people call it horseweed, you're not getting your spring weeds, your summer annuals like water hemp, a fall program's not going to help with that other than maybe allowing us to not waste any active ingredients in the spring if we're spraying and it's landing on some of these growing winter annuals like chickweed, uh, hidden bit, those are the two we see a lot of. Really to be optimal you ought to be spraying twice in the spring anyways. I mean you're spending 50 to 60 bucks an acre there with application, maybe more maybe less depending on the program you're running. And then if you want to bring in a fall program, well, there's another, what, 15 to $20 probably, plus or minus five, and then application in there somehow. Started to throw a lot of money on the table, and it's like, well, we could field cultivate it. And we do field cultivate, that's what we've always done. There's no doubt though that those weeds probably aren't holding some moisture in the ground and kind of go back and forth about it. So maybe something we need to look into. You know, they say it's bad luck to exit 
a building from a different door than you came in from. I know some people do believe that, and my dad's one of them. He always tries to leave from the same door. Does that apply to pulling in and out of fields? Because I pulled in on the west end, and then I came out just straight onto the farm here. So technically, I used a different entrance. Is that bad luck as well? Tack that on with working ground first week of March. We may be headed for disaster. Everything that I've worked up to this point is actually not even the reason I got the field cultivator out. Close to the end of the day, I wasn't planning on doing the main project until tomorrow, so I will tune back in with you and we'll talk about what I got the field cultivator out for other than just scratching that itch, you know, the tillage itch, having some fun, right? Just getting ready to pull out the drive this morning after I top off the fuel tank of the 9620. We're not going to need even close to a full tank of fuel, probably only use that 100 gallons at most. A little bit overcast today, which I'm actually kind of a fan of for what I'm about to do. Assuming the ground is even dry enough. If we pull into a field we're going to and we're tracking behind it, especially as we get north of town on some of these darker soils, we're going to be doing too much damage for what I'm trying to accomplish, which I'll explain in a little bit. I mentioned yesterday about running a fall herbicide program. This is the neighbors across the road from us. That's what a fall spray program looks like is a whistle out there there's not a weed growing there's definitely some advantages for that come springtime okay i'm just going to come clean the sole reason we are coming north of town with the field cultivator is to get all the other farmers excited and riled up because someone's working dirt no not really we actually got a legitimate reason although whether or not it's the right choice i mean we could argue about this all day about eight miles north of the main farm some of you are probably familiar with this farm from last fall it's a little bit rough on the ends which is exactly why i'm here last fall we worked with a landowner that's really big into that land shaping process you watched us help him pull his uh, scraper and relocate dirt throughout the field i don't know why that thing screeches like that and then after that because of a couple years of experience now we figured out that hey we probably ought to be at least inline ripping some of these farms that we relocate dirt on compact it and we did all that and unfortunately on some of these farms we do it i don't know if it's just the combination of everything maybe we wing tips on the inline ripper or i'm going too fast or not deep enough i really don't know i kind of leave some pretty aggressive ridges out on the field i'm not concerned about them in the field because we'll do everything with those rows. The particular challenge with these farms from a management perspective is that they're on a 32 broadcast preplant uh, program. So we're trying to spray on some 32 ahead of tillage. And when I come out here to do that, through the rows shouldn't be an issue, but I'm gonna get my brains rattled out across the ends. So we're thinking that we can do a little quality of life tillage pass here, just do the outside 120 foot. That way, when we're in a crunch in the spring, in another couple of weeks, I can go a little faster with the sprayer, get the ends done, and do all that without just absolutely obliterating myself and maybe not making so much uh, damage on my equipment. There's two things we're looking out for, compaction. If it's tracking behind the tractor, we do not want to do this. It's just not a good idea. And Dad and I have checked this field multiple times over the last week. I don't think it's going to. If it does, we're just going to have to leave because we don't want to compact soil ahead of planting. The other consideration is wasting moisture, which I'm going to get started and see if compaction is issue and then we can talk about wasting moisture here in a second that ah, actually does look pretty good out there not seeing tractor tracks working a little deeper than normal so i'm probably pulling up some moisture going about three and a half inches because these ridges have a lot of sway in them i'm trying to get this soil balanced out a little bit another issue that i mentioned yesterday is that i don't think this field cultivator is set right for this tractor it seems to be putting a lot of weight on front of the machine and not on the back so now that I look at it it doesn't even look like my rolling baskets are even running maybe I need to fix something there okay yeah that, that is why this thing was not finishing very good the rolling baskets haven't even been running silly me I must have the hoses flopped or something else I need to check that third hydraulic line has to be flipped between pressure and return on the opposites no way maybe? Maybe I should flip them and just see what it does. No, 
not like it could not work worse than it already is. ISO bus connection is extremely important on high-tech implements and equipment like John Deere stuff with TrueSet. All of the sensors and control units run through that ISO system. That's what runs the TrueSet. So if the connection is poor or bouncing out, it's obviously not going to work as good as it should. And the automation part of that, all those sensors are kind of worthless because they're not communicating with the computer and the tractor. That might have been the issue we were having. It's running fine again. It just didn't fix the basket issue. So that may be above my pay grade I'll be honest with you. I'm happy with about 85% of this field There's a few low spots kind of mucky black ground that I will not deny that the tractor did track a tiny bit It wasn't horrible. Just not something I was super excited to see Again, I do think this is a necessary pass. It's just whether or not I could have waited another week for the ground to dry some more Folding up, got to hit the road for about 15 miles to go to the next field, and then we're done with this project. We're almost there. Not a bad drive, just a little bit uh, high in traffic. And here we are at the next farm, northeast of Mattoon. You can tell I ridged this one a little bit with the inline neighbor as well. It's a little bit lighter dirt, so even if it is on the wet side, which I don't think it is, it's a little bit more forgiving to early tillage. The hard part about this tillage pass, other than just the risk of compaction, is actually the chance that it doesn't rain and we end up burning some extremely valuable moisture three to four weeks before planting season. When you work the ground, you break open that seal, you allow aeration and oxidation of your soil, meaning a lot of that moisture, especially in whatever working depth you choose, is going to dry out pretty quickly. It works great in April when you're right behind it with the planter if there's adequate moisture. If it's March and it hasn't rained, then it's a little bit more concerning. I do believe based on the forecast there are some rains in there which is why i'm trying to get this done today that if it doesn't rain between today and april 1st we're going to have bigger fish to fry regardless of what kind of tillage choice we made maybe if you were a strip till guy you've conserved a lot of moisture it it is pretty dry am i super concerned about it yet based on the forecast no but we could reevaluate another two weeks and if they don't add any rain then yeah, I might get a little bit concerned. So that's the other risk with doing this early. That's why I'm just doing the least amount possible to make spraying it here another couple weeks a little bit easier. Okay, we've been here for almost two hours. We're about done. For the most part, it worked out pretty good. Now let's just hope it rains. There's a handful of storms in the forecast over the next week, so I am optimistic. This is definitely a bit of a gamble. If I knew 100% it wasn't going to rain between now and planting, I probably would have just let my teeth get rattled out in the sprayer. But I'm hoping it rains. Home sweet home. We were gone for about three hours or so. You can get a lot done of field cultivating. It's one of my favorite jobs. Didn't go in the main entrance because the trash truck was sitting there and he was kind of confused because I was like trying to get in there and he was trying to get in there. So I just went in one of the side entrances. Sometimes it's easier to not make him figure it out. This 9620R is really a treat to operate, it's super comfortable. The only thing we're missing is a Midland radio in here, which I'm working on that. Just give me a few weeks, folks, we'll get it wired up. According to that, our DB60 is done. He's a little concerned with the chance of pop-up storms this afternoon, so as opposed to unhooking this right away, he wants to go ahead and go get that DB60, make sure we get it home and in the shed in case of storms. Field cultivator will just stay out, tractor will unhook and pull it in the shed. Okay, did a little switcheroo, we're in the DB60, like I mentioned. You 
want to talk about a completely different operating experience going from that 9620R in the field cultivator to this thing. About the only similarities they have is that they're green and yellow because two completely different beasts to take down the road. The Upops, whose place I'm passing right now, are actually out working some corn stalks, so I was in good company today doing some tillage. Great minds think alike, or make bad decisions together. We'll find out here in another eight months. This tractor does still need a full service, oil filters, cap cleaned out, etc. But we're not going to prioritize that today. We're assuming it's probably going to rain at some point in the next week. I mean, we're not going to be planning anytime in the next few weeks. So we're going to pull it in the shed. Not super worried about having it ready to plant right away. And we got something else we want to conquer before the day's over. It's kind of tight in here. Okay, DB60 safe and sound at home. Obviously, we got some things to complete on that. We took care of a few other small projects. Dad's stacking some stuff with the backhoe. And he's instructed me to go ahead and take the field cultivator out here behind the farm where we were yesterday and just start working some of these winter annuals out because they're going to get away from us if it stays warm. But it seems like it's too early to plant still. So go ahead and work them and then deal with the consequences later. Hope this humidity we have today drums up a storm. Not today, in a few days. Back out in the same field for the third time. It's pretty impressive how much field cultivating you can do with a wide field cultivator, good ground conditions, and a nice high horsepower tractor. I've worked all of that, which is only uh, 20 acres, in probably 20 minutes or so. I might have to send my wife a bill for incorporating her chicken bedding straw and litter. Or maybe she should send us a bill because I think that stuff's pretty good for fertility. I've been spotted by my little farmer in the family, so I gotta go pick him up and give him a ride. And I'm not complaining one bit about that. It's always very cool to get it, bring the kids along for the ride. I'm curious, let me know in the comments, are you guys running some kind of winter annual program in the fall? Are you just working it in the spring? So there's a lot of options here. Dad says this field is particularly bad because of all the manure that was applied here for generations. That's also part of the reason that the fertility out here is absolutely ridiculous. I don't know if there's truth to the manure story or not, I believe it. Let me know in the comments what you guys are doing. I'm just gonna finish this field up and then unhook this so we get this tractor in case it storms. Say cheese. We got a full cab in the field cultivator today. I think we're about done now, so enjoying it while we can. Can you say cheese, Graham? Cheese. cheese. Okay, just dropped the family back off at the house. Pretty much done with this project. Gonna run over and unhook the field cultivator. Trying to keep this tractor inside out of some possible storms. And technically, we run the other field cultivator with this tractor just because their pairs and ownership. So we try to keep those together. We're gonna go ahead and unhook this outside, which happens to be right here. So that's a convenient location for it. That said right next to the lime pile. And I think this does qualify. I'll wait and see what he says. That's unhooked. We're gonna store it in dad's shed for now. The tractor, not the field cultivator, I guess I should clarify. Played around with a few things on the field cultivator to get that basket work right with the true set and nothing seemed to help. If it's still acting up when we hook it up to the 9460R in a few weeks or whenever it happens, might just by a service call just because it's not really making sense and the rolling basket is a relatively important part of the finishing process. Here's the 10 day forecast in my neck of the woods. Sure hope some of these rains verify and even some more get added to the forecast that'd be really nice we need some moisture i've obviously explained a little bit of the gamble involved with doing this kind of tillage early and we've certainly entered ourselves into that arena maybe drying this ground out and going to be in a place where it's gonna have to rain looks like it will but you never know with mother nature that's the hard part about working with her as for why we're not planting the first week of march 
I know this video is long enough, so stay tuned to the next video. I'll talk a little bit about that then. Alrighty folks, it's been a fun few days of dipping our toes into spring tillage. Let's hope it starts raining here shortly, and then we get some more warm weather, and then we can actually think about putting some seeds in the ground. Of course, we do have a few loose ends to tie up with the planters. We'll get that all taken care of shortly enough, especially with this nice forecast we have. As always, I greatly appreciate every single one of you continuing to tune in and support the channel. Your viewership means the world to me. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Until then, make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace!